hit the ground running in his career. Like he was the guy that broke the streak of Brown's, the, the stupid jersey with the million names on it, like crossed off one after the other. Baker Mayfield broke that streak. He came in, he set a rookie record for touchdowns in a season. He looked like the answer in Cleveland. And then Freddie Kitchens happened, and then he looked like the answer again, and then he got hurt, and then they basically ran him out of town. They were like, you know what? Your play was so bad when you had a broken shoulder, we've decided to move in a different direction. And as it happens, Deshaun Watson's available. So that's what we're going to do. See ya. And then his Carolina tenure was an absolute disaster, like unbelievably bad. And then you have that cameo with the Rams. And now you're like, I have no earthly idea what Baker Mayfield is going to look like from one week to the next, let alone in any new environment or not. Um, but the rest of this roster is solid. And it's like, They've fallen into this classic trap of you build a, a, a good roster around a superstar quarterback and you have a contender. When the, when the quarterback goes away, you still look at the roster and you're like, you know what, this is pretty good. Like, this isn't a bad roster. We can win with this. And you're like, yeah, but eh, you can only really win with it when you have a really good quarterback. And if you don't have that guy, it's, it's not a good enough roster. So when Baker Mayfield is your quarterback, you look at the offensive line, you're like, uh-oh. Tristan Wirfs is probably going to be good at left tackle just as he was at right tackle. But now you've got Matt Filer, who was a sort of poster boy of, you know, solid starting guard and then wasn't. Um, Robert Hainsey, rookie Cody Mock, Luke Gedeke. Like, that's a group that's not inspiring confidence. The receivers should be really good, but that might not matter if it's Baker Mayfield running for his life behind a bad offensive line. It sounds like Ryan Jenkins is having... Um maybe his career end here at center. Remember last year he got hurt in training camp, opted against surgery, made it back in time for the playoffs. Jensen. Jensen. What did I say? Jenkins. Jenkins. Ryan Jensen. Sorry. My apologies to Ryan Jensen. But he was one of the better centers in the league, and uh, his career might be over now, actually, at center. Robert Hainsey, who did fill in for him last year, was okay. He was fine. But the offensive line, the run game in Tampa Bay was historically bad last year. And as much as we don't talk about the running game here, we never want any part of your team to be historically bad, no matter what it is. Even if it's punting, even mm. if it's kicking, whatever it is, you don't want it to be historically bad. H having an historically bad run game last year affected everything else because you also didn't have a pass offense that was creating open throws, that was scheming things open. It was a lot of, hey, go win one-on-one. -on -one. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, trust Tom Brady to get you the ball. So I, I think the scheme will be better. And even though the talent's on the offensive line, Luke Gedeke moving from where he struggled at guard back to his college position at right tackle, maybe that'll be better. But we just haven't seen it. That's four spots where there's either someone new or someone moving, including Tristan Wirfs, moving to left tackle. And so that's a bit of a question. I think he'll do it. He's very good. But he also didn't have to move him to left tackle. You know my thoughts there. So the O-line helping the run game Will the, uh, will, I don't know if they'll be able to. The scheme will, though, I believe. I think Canales will put them in position to succeed. Rashad White taking the bulk of the carries here. And then a year removed from the ACL surgery for Chris Godwin, he wasn't himself for much of the season last year. That foundation could be good enough. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, for Baker to just throw the ball up to, which he likes to do. He likes to, he likes to give those guys opportunities to make plays. Trey Palmer, the speed receiver, Coming out of Nebraska, he's had a nice little preseason. Now that Russell Gage is out for the year. Palmer is fighting for that wide receiver three spot. Rakeem Jarrett, another rookie wide receiver. And uh, Kate Otten was solid as a rookie, tight end, fourth rounder. I think they're okay there. Again, it just comes down to I, we have no idea what to expect out of Baker. And it's not just because he's been inconsistent. He's been inconsistent when it didn't make sense. You know how I can describe Derek Carr's career and say the highs went the highs went with when everything around him was good and the lows were when things fell apart. Baker's almost the opposite, right? When they got OBJ, he was bad. Yeah. When he had a bad situation, <laughs> he was good. When he was expected to be good, he was bad. Except when he gets off the plane and doesn't even know the playbook, he right. was good. Nothing makes sense with Baker Mayfield. <laughs> and honestly, with the box, you could you could paint both pictures. He's got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. That's good. But he also has a whole new offensive line that might not be we don't know what Anything is in Tampa Bay. I, yeah, I will say generally I'm with you on the, like, if Tristan Wirfs is, a, is an amazing right tackle, leave him there. There's not much difference. Like, what's the point? 
I will say, however, with Baker Mayfield specifically. Maybe that's different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The way he reacted when Greg Robinson was his left tackle. And in, like after about five minutes, he was like, I don't, on every single play, I am now assuming my left tackle is getting his ass kicked and running for my life in the opposite direction. That became a massive problem for them. Baker, so, he's a peaker, right? He peaks. He does peak at that left tackle. Hey, Greg Robinson's there. Right. I don't know. So I don't if, know if, he's... If, if he just has unwavering confidence that Tristan Wirfs is his left tackle, he never has to worry about what's coming from behind him. Maybe that's a good thing for Baker. Like he can actually hang in a pocket and not, you know, run for his life to the right field every single play. So that's the one situation where it might be worth having Tristan Wirfs play there, assuming it's of a, a similar kind of level. But yeah, the, the, the Ryan Jensen thing is a weird story because remember, he tore his knee, it was like training camp, right? Last season. Yeah. And got back by the end of the year. Like, surprisingly so. You know, guy goes down, bad knee injury, training camp. You're like, uh-oh, season's gone. As has happened this year. IR, probably not coming back for the year. But he ends up getting back on the field last season, having not had surgery. You know, it was some form of knee ligament injury, and then he elected to go a different route. I'm not saying um, he shouldn't have. Like, he's apparently had, you know, multiple, multiple opinions on this thing, and then ended up going the route he went. But went back into the game last year and yet that same knee might now be basically shutting down his career so i mean if it is that's a horrible thing to happen in a world where knee injuries tend not to be career enders anymore um it's unusual to see a guy go down and have one sort of linger for multiple seasons and potentially shut down his career yeah it's really unfortunate for jensen and um like I said, offensively with the Bucs, I don't know what to expect. Mike Evans, I think, is still really good. There was a, It was an odd season last year where him and Brady weren't on the same page. Like, way, way more than they were the first two years. Mm. You know, it's, it's almost in, in reverse, right? If it's early in their time together, it makes sense, and then it grows. They were not on the same page. Baker doesn't have the best history of being on the same page with receivers and everything. But like I said, Baker Mayfield's also... Very aggressive, and I think he won the job over Kyle Trask because of his aggressiveness and taking plays, yeah. taking shots down the field. Trask has been a lot more conservative by all reports in practice and during games. So Baker's going to give those playmakers a chance to make plays, which means the the range of outcomes is wide here for the Bucks, I believe. Well, I also think that so I we were I think a few shows ago I was sort of saying, look, I think there's mileage to be had in simply not being Baker Mayfield if you're Kyle Trask. Like, you could you could maybe sneak up on the rails and win this job by simply not doing the things Baker does, right? Just being super conservative and not making mistakes. Um, but Baker Mayfield hasn't really made any mistakes in preseason. Like, if he'd gone out there and every time they put him on the field there was a turnover-worthy play out there, then I think Kyle Trask could have actually snuck that job. Also, by the way, Trask has been out there and actually thrown those turnover-worthy plays. So... Baker didn't do it, and Kyle Trask did do it despite being conservative. That's usually not a particularly good uh, feeling. The other thing, it's worth mentioning, I did not like this guy as a draft prospect, but Trey Palmer now has been making, he's made at least one play that simply did not feature in his college tape at all in every single preseason game. Like, he's been consistently... Uh, high pointing or winning contested catches deep down the field, tracking the ball well and winning it above his head, not letting it drop into a bucket. I mean, if he's able to do that, his speed plays like that. That guy is blazing straight line speed. Um, and in college, it just I mean, I didn't I didn't think it would matter enough because I didn't think he could actually make those plays at the catch point. If he's figured that out in the last six months. I mean, he should absolutely feature in a receiving core with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. and Be the deep threat. Just be the fast guy, too. Right. And just be the fast guy. Color me intrigued. I know I say intrigued a lot. Hmm. Because I can't wait. The season's coming soon. Can't wait to see all of it play out. But color me intrigued by the Bucks' offense with Canales maybe making it a little bit easier. More boot action, more schemed open throws.